that is truly near and dear to my heart, and that is fertilization. In particular, I'm going to talk about fertilizing trees and shrubs. I think that there is a lot of confusion about that, especially as to when you feed them, how you feed them, and what you feed them with, and I'm going to clarify that for you. Let's start here. I've got this really beautiful pugster blue butterfly bush. This is actually what I would call a neutral loving plant. What do I mean by that? It likes a neutral pH, kind of sweeter pH level, so I want to use a very just basic fertilizer. So the fertilizer that I'm going to use for this is actually called plant tone. There are a couple of things that I really like about a fertilizer like this. One, it is organic, which does not have to be an organic fertilizer. However, organic fertilizers are much more slow release and that is a much healthier type of fertilizer for your trees and shrubs. The other thing that I love about it is that it has a lot of beneficial microbes. It is very important to put microbes back into the soil because living soil, like I always talk about, mean, I talk about means living plants, living soil, living plants. Here's what you do. It's very simple math. It's not hard at all. What you're gonna do is you're gonna actually follow the branches all the way out to their tips on this butterfly bush. This imaginary line down to the soil is called the drip line. This is where you want to feed all of your trees and shrubs. I know our tendency is to feed right up tight against the trunk, but you really want to feed out at this drip line because this is where all the delicious feeder roots are. These are the roots that actually absorb the nutrients and that is very important that we place our fertilizer there. With plant tone, the rate is basically for the fall time of the year is a half a cup for every foot of this shrub's width. So I'm gonna say that this butterfly bush is about a foot wide, so you're literally going to use just a half a cup, that's what this looks like, a half a cup of plant tone granular, dry, sprinkled around this drip line. There are a couple of things that are really important. If you have mulch here, I want you to temporarily scooch back that mulch so that fertilizer can really make contact with the soil. If you wanna be really, really thorough in your fertilization of this shrub, which I love, you could take a trowel, you could kind of cut it down into the soil at the drip line, shimmy it back and forth a little bit to make a little space, and then literally pour this granular plant tone down into that hole. This gives a deeper root feeding for this butterfly bush. We talked about what to use for this butterfly bush, how to do it, when to do it is very important. We, I'm talking fall, which really means kind of at the start of fall. Fall this year, September 22nd. That's really actually a good time to think about starting the fertilization for your, for your trees and shrubs. So we'll go all the way from September all the way through October. It's perfect timing. There's more and more research showing that late fall fertilizations are wonderful for trees and shrubs. It does not push too much growth late in the season. It actually stores it up in the root system it actually pushes deeper root growth. And then in the spring, that fertilizer is available for those trees and shrubs to pull upon. We're gonna move on to our limelight hydrangea because it has a little different fertilization strategy. Okay, so now on to a more acid loving plant, the limelight hydrangea. What do I mean by acid loving? It actually likes a lower pH for the soil. It makes it happier. If the pH is a little bit lower, it can better absorb the fertilizer. I talked about rate with plant tone. It's the same with holly tone. So holly tone is ideal fertilizer for your acid loving plants. So not just your hydrangea, but almost all of your evergreen shrubs and trees. There are a couple of exceptions to the evergreen family though that are not acid loving. Do not give your boxwood or your arborvitae holly tone. You would give them plant tone. So back to our acid loving plant. We talked about using a half a cup for every foot of shrub width in the fall. We used a half a cup total for that butterfly bush. This one's a little wider. I'm gonna say this is about two feet wide, followed all the way out to the drip line again. So I'm actually gonna use one full cup of holly tone at the drip line of this limelight hydrangea to really make it happy. Now, if this plant actually expanded and it was past three feet wide, then I want you to double the rate of holly tone. Do not be shy. You can use more fertilizer than you think, especially when it comes to organics. Now we're gonna move on to fertilizing our larger trees. 
Now it's time to talk about fertilizing our trees. I cannot stress enough how important it is to fertilize your trees in the fall. We have had a really stressful summer and putting the proper fertilizer down around a small tree to a large tree can really help it recover from that summer heat and stress. The other thing is often trees can get a little bit of disease activity and some insects bothering them. If you properly fertilize trees, this can really help keep them strong enough to withstand a little bit of disease activity and a little bit of insect activity, just like humans. If we're strong and healthy, we can handle it. This is actually a calorie pear and we're going to fertilize this tree today because it's really important that it gets its fall fertilization. And I also noticed on this tree that it's showing a little bit of stress. It's got a disease called cedar apple rust on it, but it's not something that's gonna kill the plant. It could weaken it slightly, but as long as we fertilize it properly, it can really handle this disease on it. Will right now is actually doing a little bit of clearing around the drip line of this pear. This is really important. We talked about fertilizing shrubs out at the drip line. This is the same thing that you wanna do for trees because that's where all the great feeder roots are. And when we fertilize out of the drip line, it actually encourages the roots to move out further and make a more extensive root system. So Will has just temporarily scooched back the mulch here. And Will, I think you measured out a little bit of fertilizer too. All right, so Will it looks like a big container of fertilizer. That's actually just a little appetizer for this tree. We're going to use Tree Tone. It's an organic fertilizer that is perfect for this pear. And the reason that he's measured out so much is because you actually want to use nine cups of fertilizer for every inch of trunk width. So what we're talking about is basically the caliper of the trunk. I'm just gonna do this in a simple method, which is just eyeballing it. So when I look at that pair, to me, it looks about two inches wide. So I know that I need to use nine cups for every inch, which means a total of 18 cups all along the drip line of this tree. So Will, you could do a simple method where you just sprinkle that down at the drip line. Now for smaller trees, that's really okay. For your larger trees, however, it would be great if you did a deeper root feeding. So Will at that point might take a trowel or even an auger and actually cut some holes about every two feet apart, about six inches deep and pour that granular tree tone right down into those holes. And that makes a deeper root feeding that really, really thoroughly gets up into that root system. People always ask the question about when to fertilize in the fall. You can actually do it even when the leaves have fallen off the tree but before the ground has frozen. That gives you a long period of time all through really that whole month of October into November. That fertilizer will store the tree, the, the tree will store the fertilizer in the root system. And as soon as it needs it in the spring, it'll suck up all that delicious tree tone. Thanks a bunch, see you next time.